This video is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the Dragonfly range of USB DACs. Click to audioquest.com for more information. Okay, so today we're back with another dose of FOMO, and this relates to what I think are the most expensive Bluetooth headphones ever released. But before we get to the specifics of that new headphone, that new really, really, really expensive headphone, I want to just take a step back and take a sort of a helicopter view of the last maybe six or seven years of Bluetooth headphones, because when I bought my first active noise cancelling pair of Bluetooth headphones in 2016, they were the Sony WF, no, not WF, MDR. They were made by the MDR Lab 1000X, and then the, there was a version 2 that was the MDR lab didn't make and it was called the WH. Anyway, Sony technicalities aside, this new noise cancelling model from the Japanese company was possibly the first real rival to the then market incumbent Bose. Because up until that point, Bose had really dominated the noise cancelling headphone space. And then Sony came along and there have been a few others that have come along in Sony's wake. We've obviously had five generations of that Sony headphone now. But all of those headphones really sold for roughly, what, 300 euros, maybe 400 euros in a pinch. But then at the end of 2020, Apple announced the AirPods Max, their first over-ear full-sized noise cancelling Bluetooth headphone. And there were gasps of horror that Apple had the temerity to charge more than 500 euros for that pair of headphones. In fact, I think right now in Germany they sell for nearly 600. But in the interceding, what, year and a half, a lot has changed. For example, in January of this year, the Harman Group quietly slipped out the Mark Levinson number 5909 Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone. And they sold for a dollar short of a thousand euros. We've reviewed those, I'll put a link in the description box below. But then at the Munich High End Show, a few months later, T plus A debuted their Solitaire T headphone, which they are positioning as a sort of home listening headphone, but with a Bluetooth radio inside. So it can be used as a pair of Bluetooth and I think noise cancelling headphones out of the house. So this was meant to be a hybrid headphone. But this was going to sell, or is selling for, I think, 1,600 euros. So to my mind, that then became the most expensive Bluetooth headphone in the world. But then last week, Audio-Technica one-upped Mark Levinson and Apple and T plus A with the announcement of their new uber high-end Bluetooth headphone. And this new model, like the turntable we looked at last week, is designed or is being released to celebrate Audio Technica's 60th anniversary. And it's called the ATH WB2022. Now, I don't have a pair. It's not being released until next year. But I do have some things to say about this, irrespective of its sound quality, or my thoughts go beyond sound quality. But we'll start with what it looks like. Because as anybody who has held a pair of more expensive Audio Technica headphones will know, they're really beautifully made. And these ATH WB2022 don't look any different. And the most striking feature, I think, is the wooden ear cup on the outside. And that's a combination of maple, mahogany, and walnut. Now that is implemented not just for looks, but also for sound quality, or so I'm told. That's what headphone experts tell me, is that a wooden ear cup can really help enrich the sound quality of a headphone. And also inside that ear cup are two different chambers. There's one chamber for the driver and one chamber for the electronics. Now the driver is a new driver that Audio Technica have developed. I think it's four and a half centimeters in diameter. It's a dynamic driver. And I think it's called the DLC driver, which is basically audio technica speak for diamond-like carbon. But then the other chamber, in each ear cup, there is a battery, there's an ESS DAC, and there is a Nishinbo Devices Muses operational amplifier, or an op-amp, that drives the driver, that powers the driver. And that's in each earpiece. So we get 
one battery, one DAC, one amplifier this side, one battery, one DAC, one amp this side, which is very unusual as far as I can tell for a Bluetooth headphone. And we should also really remark upon the headband and the ear cups because they're all covered in Alcantara. So they look, it just, yeah, I guess it looks really plush. This looks like a very comfortable plush headphone, although I don't think that the wooden ear cup will do very much to keep this from being a heavy headphone. At this stage, Audio Technica have yet to specify its weight. Now, we should really talk about the price of this headphone because the ATH WB 2022 will sell for, when it goes on sale next year, 3,000 euros a pair. Yep, 3,000 euros a pair. This is by far, as far as I can tell, the world's most expensive Bluetooth headphone. Now, if you're gonna drop that kind of money on a headphone, you need to know about what Bluetooth codecs can and cannot do. The marketing materials for many, many Bluetooth products tell us that this thing can do 2496 or it can do high-res audio. And that is a half-truth. Yes, it will play those files, no problem. So if you've got a high-res file on your phone you're, or you're pulling down a high-res stream and you're sending it Bluetooth to the Audio-Technica headphones, yes, it will play that file. But it will not play that file without first throwing some of the data away. Now, inside this headphone are two codecs two Bluetooth codecs that handle the transmission of data from the phone to the headphones. Possibly the best sounding one is Sony's LDAC. Now that operates at 990 kilobits per second in optimal conditions where there's no interference and when the connection between the phone and the headphones is good. Otherwise it drops back to 660 or 330. But even if it's operating at 990, it is not capable of carrying a lossless CD quality digital audio signal. Now I get this kind of comment a lot of like, why not John 1? 990 seems to be enough. I mean, to me, when I see a CD quality file playing somewhere, it says like 600 or 700. And yet, if you have a, a music streamer, like I've been playing with a Squeezebox Touch recently, and the Squeezebox server will tell me what bit rate is is in play on that file at any given time. And it does vary. Now, my understanding is, is that it can vary from anything from 600 kilobits per second to 1,000. Now, as far as I can tell from speaking to people like Sony or Qualcomm, I've only had brief conversations with them, but basically their codecs are not enough to capture that lossless CD quality stream. It's just a little bit too much data, especially if error correction is to be implemented as well. So whatever the reasons why, Sony LDAC cannot do CD quality audio. It will throw information away. So it definitely, definitely cannot do a high res file losslessly. It will throw information away. That's unlike if we're streaming a high res file or a CD quality file over our home network. Usually all of the bits stay intact and nothing is thrown away. But Bluetooth codecs, they do, they discard some information to fit it, in the Sony's case, down that 990 kilobits per second pipe. And that's for Android users, right? So if you're using an Android phone with these Audio-Technica headphones, you're probably gonna get a Sony LDAC connection. So that's gonna sound pretty good. But I think the difference becomes more stark if we use an iPhone because the Audio-Technica only specify AAC for iPhones. Because iPhones don't have LDAC, they don't have Aptex, they only have AAC. And here, the pipe, the bandwidth of the pipe, is 264 kilobits per second. So that's less than Spotify's 320 kilobits per second. Yes, I know the codec is different, and yes, I know we shouldn't get too hung up on numbers, but I'm just explaining this to give some context to, I guess, how lossy AAC is. Now, once again, many people might not hear the difference between an AAC stream and a proper lossless stream were it possible with a pair of Bluetooth headphones. I guess we'll never know. So I guess the theory of Bluetooth codecs for audio sounds a lot worse than the reality. But I'm making these points here because if you're dropping three grand on a headphone, you really need to know that the connection between any device and your fancy audio technica headphones is going to be a lossy connection, not lossless. But 
Like the Focal Batisse, Audio-Technica have also included a USB DAC mode. So we can connect the headphones to a laptop or a smartphone with a USB-C to USB-C or the alternative USB-C to USB-A cable and then play lossless audio that way. So in that particular hardwired mode, lossless audio then becomes possible. But you're gonna wanna keep that cable pretty close to hand because when you are listening to the ATH-WB2022 in wireless mode, in Bluetooth mode, you're only gonna get nine hours of runtime before you'll need to recharge them. And yes, it's a USB-C connection on the back, I think, of the left ear cup. And a bit like the Bowers and Wilkins PX7S2 and PX8, all the controls are press buttons on the back of each ear cup, so on the back rim. There's no touch control on that wood panel. I mean, why would there be? But here comes the kicker, the kicker for me anyway, is that these new Audio-Technica Bluetooth headphones don't have inbuilt active noise cancellation. They don't have any noise cancellation at all built in. And for me, that's the number one advantage of using a Bluetooth headphone, or rather using a headphone that has a digital signal or digital connection to the smartphone is that it gives me active noise cancellation. So it suppresses much of the background noise when I'm out and about in the street or on an airplane or on a train. Active noise cancellation for me is the pivotal feature of many of the Bluetooth headphones that I've looked at recently. So you might say, well, okay, this new Audio-Technica isn't designed for taking it on a plane or a train or even out of the house. And then considering the outward aesthetics of this headphone, I would possibly agree with you. It doesn't look like it's an outdoor headphone. So then I would question the need to create a Bluetooth headphone for indoor use. Because if you've got a full-sized, high-end, dynamic driver headphone close back, why do you need to have it Bluetooth? I mean, at home, and this is my personal take, is that I'm okay with a wire. I'm totally okay with a wire. It's only when I get out of the house that I generally want to lose the wire. And which is why Bluetooth is great because it gives us a wireless connection and access to a digital input on the headphone to therefore give us active noise cancellation. So I don't really know who this Audio-Technica headphone is for. I mean, maybe it's for just a super niche buyer who wants an Audio-Technica headphone, who likes the look of the wooden ear cups and the Alcantara covering of the headband and the ear pads. And also, yeah, I guess wants that luxury feeling but does not want a wire at home. Yeah, I think that's what it is really. This is a headphone for people who don't want wires at home. And I think that is super, super niche. So the ATH-WB2022 begins shipping sometime next year. I believe orders are being taken now. It is a limited edition, according to Audio-Technica, but how many they're making, they're not saying at this stage. So I don't know how many units will be available, but there is still an element of FOMO, I think, to this headphone. Oh, and I almost forgot, and this is important if you're spending this much money on a pair of Bluetooth headphones, is that Audio-Technica have stated that they will replace the internal batteries inside each ear cup whenever needed, but they'll also replace the ear pads and the headband. So really, I think also what you're getting for your 3,000 euros is long-term peace of mind that you'll be looked after down the road. But no, I won't be getting a pair of these in for review. As you can probably tell, they're not my thing, right? I don't think that a Bluetooth headphone that really isn't designed to go outdoors is of interest to me. So why would I review it? Because I'm probably only gonna pile more criticism onto it than I have in this particular video, right? So next up for me, Bowers and Wilkins are sending me a pair of PX8. In fact, I think they're arriving today. I also have a pair of Sennheiser Momentum 4 wireless headphones. And it's very cool actually, because a patron sent me those. And I've been sitting on those for a few weeks. I've not had the time to listen to them yet, but I will be covering those in the, well, the next month or so. So yeah, plenty more Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones coverage to come on this channel. But if you like this video, if you thought it was informative, or if you enjoy my take on this very expensive headphone, then please consider giving this video a like down below. If you like my attitude, towards high-end products like this in that I simply won't bow down to a product 
that comes from an industry giant that I think, yeah, really has uber, uber niche appeal. Not going to do it. So if you dig that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.